Islam promotes dangerous, we might even say deadly, hygiene practices. And I, I'm willing to lay this down as a rule. If your religion would get you killed because of its hygiene practices, if you took it seriously, um, probably not the true religion, probably not from God. What do I mean here? Um, well, there are lots of directions we could go. For instance, I could point out that uh, according to Surah 4, verse 3, Muslims can marry up to four women. And that according to Surah 4, verse 24, and other, Mus and other passages in the Quran, uh, Muslims can have many sex slaves, captives that they capture in battle. So you go into battle, uh, you capture a woman, you take her home and you have sex with her, she's your captive, and then you go have sex with your four wives, right? You don't know what kind of diseases that woman has, right? You, 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 just, you just captured her in battle. You don't know if she's got syphilis or AIDS or what. You don't know what she's got. And you're going right. from her back to your four wives who are producing your children. You are spreading disease yeah. like wildfire. Uh, but we won't go in that direction. Let's just go with what we would normally think of when we, when, when we talk about hygiene. Sunan Abu Dawood, number 67. I heard that the people asked the Prophet of Allah, Water is brought for you from the well of Buddha. It is a well in which dead dogs, menstrual cloths, and excrement of people are thrown. The Messenger of Allah replied, Verily, water is pure and is not defiled by anything. Hmm. Notice what this says. Yeah. Water's brought to you. <laughs> We're bringing this to you and your people, Muhammad. Oh, wow. huh? That's nasty, though. And there's just one problem. The, wa the well where we're getting this, this is our garbage. Ooh. This is where we throw our garbage. This is where we throw our dead animals. This is where we throw used menstrual cloths. And this is where we dump our toilet buckets into. Oh, yeah. And we're scooping up some water to bring it to you so you can wash up and perform your ablutions. Any problem with that, prophet of God? <laughs> no, water's not made impure by anything. Nothing you can do will make water impure. If you t fortunately, most Muslims do not take that seriously, right? Praise fortunately, God. if you as a Muslim took this seriously, you are dead. You will die. Fortunately, again, fortunately, most Muslims know better than their prophet, right? Muhammad didn't know. I'm surprised, uh, I'm yeah, surprised he, wow. he made it through life. Um, but notice, uh, go ahead and wash up with uh, your, you know, dead animal and menstrual cloth. Uh, and well even dogs, water. right? They're dogs. No. Oh, my goodness. And they're the carry parasites, my goodness. But it's not just for washing up. Sunan ibn Majah, number 520. It was narrated that Jabir ibn Abdullah said, We came to a pond in which there was the carcass of a donkey. So we refrain from using the water until the messenger of Allah came. Notice, we refrain from using the water. Smart. Yep. Smart. Maybe it. we shouldn't drink this water with the dead donkey floating in it. Ooh. We refrain from using the water until the messenger of Allah came to us and said, water is not made pure by anything, made impure by anything. It's his rule, right? You can't do anything to make what you put dead animals in it, use menstrual cloths, garbage. Uh, you can urinate in it. You can use a bat. It doesn't matter. Uh, water is not made impure by anything. So what did they do? What did the Muslims do? Then we drank from it and gave it to our animals to drink, and we carried some with us. So we took, put some in our little canteens. We uh, drank some of it. We gave some of it to our animals. Dead donkey floating in it. And uh, if you don't know the importance of that, there, that's bad, ladies and gentlemen. We'll just say that it's bad to be drinking water with dead animals floating in it. Uh, let's read a couple more. Sahih al-Bukhari, number 5782. <laughs> Allah's messenger said, If a fly falls into the vessel of any of you, let him dip all of it into the vessel and then throw it, i.e. the fly, away. For in one of its wings there is a disease, and in the other there is healing, the antidote, uh, the treatment for that disease. So notice what he says, right? You're sitting there, you're, you're, you're eating something, you're drinking something. Fly lands in your food. Um, you know, you could just throw the fly away or scoop it out or something like this. Um, no, says Muhammad, you dunk that fly all the way in the food. You keep pushing the fly in the food. Why? Because even though one of the fly's wings has a disease on it, the other wing has the cure for the disease. This is your prophet. You have to believe it, right? So according to your prophet, um, if there's a disease that's carried by flies, just go to the uh, just go to yeah. the other wing. First of all, it's 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 only on one wing, but the other wing has that's has the cure, cure right? Yeah. Yeah. So flies carry all kinds of uh, diseases. Let's say typhoid, right? Uh, flies, 
they eat some very nasty stuff, right? If an animal goes to the bathroom on the ground, flies go to that, right? And that's what they crawl around on. And then that fly, that same fly, goes uh, away from the excrement of that possibly sick Ooh. animal and goes into your food. And what do you do? Get rid of it? Throw it out? No! Dunk that fly in the food. Uh -huh. Then you get rid of the fly. Then you eat your food because you've got the cure now, right? Now you've got the cure. Boy, you made me lose my appetite, man. I don't think I'm going to eat for a week. I mean, probably I need to. <laughs> One more. Uh, Musnid Ahmed, number 16, yeah. 245. Muawiyah said, I saw the prophet sucking on the tongue or the lips of Al-Hassan, son of Ali. May the prayers of Allah be upon him. For no tongue or lips that the prophet sucked on will be tormented by hellfire. So, uh, Muhammad, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not, just to clarify, I'm not insinuating that there's anything homosexual involved here. It's just some weird practice that Muhammad had where he would suck on the tongue of other boys and men, right? right? And in this case, it would be his grandson here. Son of so, hey, grandson, come here. I want to suck on your tongue. Um, you suck on my tongue. Now, uh, I'm only talking about the, the, the hygiene practice here because think about this, right? We want to wash up for dinner, right, Sam? We're going to have a good meal. Yeah. So we go and we get some water from a well with uh, human waste and dead dogs and use menstrual cloths in it. We put our hands in there. We wash up for dinner, right? We perform our... our, our our ablutions for our meal. We're going to wash up. We go sit down. We got him up. Oh, a fly who just flew off a pile of dog waste uh, then lands in my food. I start dunking that. And now that I've dunked it in there, I know I've got all the cure off of there. So now I can eat my food. But now I'm feeling sick, right? Because I have, uh, you know, dead dog germs all over my hand and menstrual cloth waste all over my hands. And uh, and feces and urine all over my hands because that was, that's what was in the well. I washed up with that. Now I'm eating the food and I dunked the fly and it's got the disease on it. I'm eating that. Now I've got, it. Now I've got a stomach ache, Sam. So I want to refresh myself with a glass of, glass of water. So I get a glass of dead donkey water. They got the donkey floating in it. I take a drink of that. Now I'm feeling really bad. Call the kid over here, suck on his tongue, pass all the germs to him, and now... What's the, what's the solution? We're all feeling real bad. What's the solution, Sam? Camel urine. We'll just go drink a bunch of camel urine because, uh, because that's how you... That's and how you mix you, it in with milk. Camel urine and milk, that's how you get rid of uh, your stomach ills. Ladies and gentlemen, is this guy a prophet? I'm just asking, is this guy a prophet? Because every one of you out there, you know you would never follow these practices. Yeah. You know that if you did follow these practices, you would die and so you know what? You know that you know this is not coming from God. These people are coming to Muhammad. Muhammad, guide us. Can we do this? Yes, water is not made impure by anything. He's speaking as a prophet there. And he's wrong. And if you believe him, you will die. These, this is not a joke here, ladies and gentlemen. If you follow Muhammad, you can die from this. Definitely, yeah. So deep down, if you're not following this, deep down, do you really believe in your prophet? Oh, boy. I'm not sure they do, my friend. Yeah.